Hello everyone. Uh, in this video lesson, I will lecture about chapter 9, Embedded Operating System. Uh, so let's take a look at it. What are we going to cover today? Uh, basically, after completing of this chapter, students should be able to explain what embedded operating system are and where they are used. Describe window Internet of Things and embedded operating system. Nowadays, uh, there are many IoT devices in household as well as commercial places. So, it is important for us to learn what they are and how to prevent hackers from inputting malicious code to the IoT devices. Also, the last one is to identify vulnerabilities of embedded OS and best practices for protecting them. Okay, so in the next slide, basically we're going to talk about embedded operating system. Uh, any computer system that is not a general purpose of PC or server is called embedded operating system. For example, GPS, ATMs, right? And all electronic consumer and industrial items or products. Okay. So embedded operating system basically is a small program that develop for embedded system, right? For example, if you have a thermostat in your home, within that thermostat, there is an embedded operating system. They are designed to be small and efficient. ROTS, this is a real-time operating system. As I mentioned to you, thermostat, appliances control, and spacecraft, all of them are a device that are programmable. Therefore, sometimes we call this as a real-time operating system or RTOS. Uh, some corporate buildings also use this, okay, and all network devices, they also, some of the networking devices use, uh, use embedded operating system like firewalls, switches, and routers. Okay, recently security researchers have reverse engineered software on the firmware, right? What does it mean is that they are able to insert a modified software to control the firewall behavior. Can you imagine if hackers could modify a firewall to copy the network traffic and passing through the interface? That means they will create a chaos to the critical infrastructure of the devices itself. For example, can you imagine if a hackers modify the power grid system for the whole United States or for the state of Texas. They can automatically shut down and control the elect electronic grid of their power. That will create a chaos to the whole nation. Therefore, it is important that those are those who are responsible administer and manage the devices need to ensure they have good security measures okay uh this slide i think i'm gonna skip that because all right window 10 iot device right window iot device provide full Windows API, application programming interface. This device, this operating system can perform many of the same tasks as desktop version. I do not know if many of you have heard about Raspberry Pi. This is basically a small motherboard, right? It's designed to make things easy for developer. Let me show it to you. I'm going to open this internet and I want to show you Raspberry Pi 4. Okay. You can buy this in Amazon or even Walmart, right? 
Raspberry Pi, right? They sell it in Best Buy. This is the latest one, okay? Whenever you have time, perhaps you can explore how to play around with this uh, Raspberry Pi devices. It has the USB port. It has the microprocessor and this all this pin can control all the IOD devices from refrigerator, thermostat, door, garage door, and everything else there. And stereo system. Okay? And they need to be power from here. So they will give you a power. You see this? This is two gig, two gig, two gigabyte of RAM. If you want to have more RAM, that means it has more capabilities. You can set up more, uh, basically, you can set up more application and can run more efficient, right? This one comes with a quad-core A72 CPU, 2 gig of RAM, right? They have HDMI, USB. Also, they come with a wireless and Bluetooth. Can you imagine that? Maybe in the next few in the next few years we are not gonna use desktop computer anymore we can just use this computer which is a small devices raspberry pi can do almost everything maybe five years from now pc will become obsolete okay. so let's see what happened anyway let's go to the move let's go to the next slide so uh we just talked about the raspberry pi so let's go to the next one. Uh, some other proprietary embedded system, operating system. Since they are, since the growing of uh, internet, internet of things or internet of things or many companies or many organizations start producing this operating system. Okay, some example of it like VX Works, right? VX Work. This is the textbook show you the interface of that. I play more on the Raspberry Pi because it is more popular. So I usually stick with someone. I usually stick with uh, a device that are quite popular and widely used because there are more resources on the internet. Okay, more resources and more support. Okay, so VX Works is one of them. You have Green Hill software. This is for uh, F3, F35 Joint Strike Fighters. Then there is another one is QNX Software System or QNX, okay, used by Cisco. Uh, there is uh, Artems, okay. No, actually this is no. Uh, this is the brand and this is another type, which is. Uh, other proprietary embedded operating system is called real-time executive for multiprocessor system. Okay. Used in space system support processor to design and operate in space. Okay. Uh, when people use multiple embedded operating system, that means it has more capability and more processing power, right? Uh, next, uh, okay. In the next few slides, we are going to discuss about monolithic and microlithic, right? What is monolithic? Monolithic is a device that, uh, an operating system that is tailored for devices with limited memory or hard drive capacity. For example, this type of monolithic embedded operating system is designed to use in industrial medical and consumer items or products. Let me show you example. This one is called monolithic kernel operating system. Okay, so this is your hardware and this is your kernel and application specific, right? On the other hand, the micro kernel, which is I'm going to talk about it in the next slide here, right? Micro kernel is basically a regular Linux operating system that is converted into RTOS. This is suitable for embedded applications requiring a guarantee response in a predictable manner. For example, 
when you buy a wireless router for your home network they have an embedded linux operating system with it so the micro kernel is basically is more into use for more complex things instead of simple one okay so the first one the monolithic is just designed for specific devices for industrial medical and consumer items right remember the monolithic is tailored for device with limited memory and hard disk capacity so this linux one the micro kernel you can use for a wide range of use okay if you see in the slide here it show you some example the graph about the difference between monolithic kernels and micro kernels okay all right uh, as you can see that this uh, web-based application setup for your router they use linux okay is this monolithic or microlithic this is called microlithic okay micro kernel i think they call it it's not microlithic the monolithic and micro kernel okay uh, so why we need to learn this thing why we have to learn embedded operating system well the impact because there are so many people and organization use internet of things and each devices has their own ip address so that mean there will be more attacks and some attacks have become more serious okay hackers also can attack like atm machine for example they can pull out money from people's bank account so that's why we need to study this and pay more attention about embedded operating system that were that are used by most of the internet of things all right uh i think i just mentioned this since today there are more embedded devices there are more attacks from hackers and terrorists others use this to further financial and political causes right uh, there are billion devices are located everywhere and i think we will see this more and more okay because i don't know whether you guys have heard about smart home in smart home if you if student purchase a new homes some of the new homes come with smart home that means you can control the whole house using control panel right you can control your garage door your main door your air conditioning temperature your stereo system your cctv uh, your light everything can be managed through a small device okay? therefore we need to pay a little bit more attention on this issue all right the pros and the cons right the advantages of connecting networks where is efficient and economy and ability to manage and share services right in the past we have to manually set everything up but now with the internet of things and embedded operating system we can control almost everything in the palm of your smartphone okay? any devices that added to the network infrastructure increases the potential for security problem therefore we need to mitigate this risk otherwise hackers will get in into the system security tester well if a company produce embedded operating system or manufacture internet of things they have to consider several of the factors for example what are the pci device that are present where were they manufactured whether the supply chain is trustworthy or not okay notice that uh, as uh, when i make this video we have a pandemic with coronaviruses so the supply chain system in the us uh, 
was helped because many of the supply chains of our companies or organization in the United States depend on China, India, and Philippines, and all other countries in Europe. So basically, we live in a global connecting, global connected networks. Things happen in one country can have an effect in another place. This is called globalization or part of globalization. You can read the rest of the contributing factors that security testers need to pay attention when they manufacture embedded operating system of IoT. Uh, general purpose of desktop operating system is simple to patch, right? Because when Microsoft has some vulnerabilities issue, they wait for a few days and they can create a patch and then release it. The problem with the embedded operating system they must continue operating regardless of the threat, regardless of the threat. Also, uh, this embedded operating system, most of them are open source. Okay, uh, Patching Linux kernel estimated at 10 of billions of dollars, right? They are large, okay? Linux kernel offer flexibility and support, but they have a large and has many code portion on it. Fixing an expensive vulnerability. Okay, so many of these Internet of Things or embedded operating system use this type of OS that is sometimes difficult to patch right away. And more importantly, this company or organization are not security company, so they may know how to create a thermostat, but they are not familiar with security features on that, especially the programming side. Uh, okay, I think I'm gonna stop my lecture in this, uh, stop in this slide, uh, because I usually limit my lecture to 15 minutes. The rest of the slide, please go over with that. Just make sure you know the difference between why we, just make sure that student learn what is embedded operating system and why we need to study this okay thank you very much and i hope that this video lecture is informative to you thank you